We'll move on to Julian's question. Julian says this, and it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's, it's a longer question, but I think the answer is something people want to know about. Julian says, I have a question about progressive overload. What parameters do you use to know when to increase resistance intensity? Well, this is the first question of many, but so I always worry about this particular question. In other words, you're asking me when to add load, I think. But remember, adding load is just one part of the formula. There's also sets. I think you get stronger by additional sets. I know you get stronger by adding additional reps to the load you're using. And that's a major thing I really emphasize in my training and my coaching. But besides increasing the load, increasing the number of sets, increasing the number of reps, there's also increasing density. Uh, with those first three examples, we're playing around with both load and volume. Volume is basically reps times sets. So three sets of eight is 24. And if you do it with 100, doesn't matter if it's kilos, pounds, stone, or whatever, um, <laughs> uh, ball bearings, if you do three by eight, uh, you do 24 reps with 100, and then a few months later, you do 24 reps with 200, I know that you're stronger, even if you did, went from three sets of eight to 24 singles. I know you're stronger, okay? Because that's, that's the rule of volume and load. Density is something I don't think enough people really play with anymore, and I think it's to their detriment. So density is, there's two ways to look at it. Same amount of work, less time, or more work, same time, more work, less time. But the idea is we're taking our work and we're squeezing it at a time. You can also do chase more reps in a set amount of time. Uh, this is actually a great way for, um, it's, it's a great hypertrophy workout and general, I, I don't even know what the word would be, general density. If you want to, if you want to get more attributes from your training program, uh, you give yourself 10 minutes and you're going to do, by the way, I think single arm presses is a great way to start in this, uh, but so is pull-ups and probably, well, I mean, obviously every exercise can work, but I like single arm uh, presses to teach this first because people understand it intuitively. So what I would do is I set a 10 minute timer. I take a kettlebell, a dumbbell, whatever, a barbell. Uh, let's just say it's a 24 kilo and I do it a set of seven. I write down seven left, set of seven, seven right. And then the next set I do six, I do six, I do eight, I do eight. And I just keep jotting down. And when the timer goes off at 10 minutes, I add up the number of left presses and right presses. Next time I do this workout, I am chasing that total number. Uh, let's say in a 10 minute period, I'm just making up. We did 50. In the next workout, my goal is to get 51. Now, what happens usually is you get 60. But then what happens in that 10 minute period is you begin to, you, I was about to say, you, you press the time limit, which is <laughs> a play on words, but as you, as you mess with that time, you'll notice that you suddenly get to a point where you can't increase reps anymore. It's just, you know, there's just not enough time in the 10 minutes. And then you go up and load, and that instantly brings those numbers back down, which are easier to chase. If you can max that time out, uh, you might be able to, th so if you're doing the standard kettlebells, let's say you get up to, oh, that would be a lot, uh, it's gonna, 24 kilos, and you get up to a uh, hundred reps in ten minutes, left and right, left a hundred, right a hundred. I do think that's doable. Well, next bell would be the twenty-eight. At least in my gym, would be the twenty-eight. If you chase up to that hundred rep there, and then jump to the thirty-two, now now we're looking at a fairly good load for single arm presses to get yourself up to that hundred left, hundred right in in the time allotted uh, is going to be harder and harder. Um, you might want to chase that for a week, three workouts, six workouts, uh, four weeks of it, and then back off and move to something else. So I, I think that's, it's an overview of how you do it. Um, 
as an Olympic lifter, uh, we would add weight when you made the lift. Now that is a really different way of training and, and most of our listeners probably wouldn't get a lot of value out of that. If I'm snatching, uh, I'm going to use pounds this time because I can remember it. my first workout with the Olympic snatch, I snatched 165. The following time I came in, when I got to 165 and made it, um, my coach asked me to go to 170. Uh, I made it, we went to 175, and then that's how the first few months were. You make a lift, you go up. So a lot of it depends on what you're trying to do. Personally, I like when you... I like it when people ask this question to play around with this concept called density, where you're chasing more reps in the same amount of time, because I think it's a natural, it's a, a very natural teaching device for even if you're, if you're alone in your own home gym, you, you, you've got your timer, it can be your 101 Dalmatians walk lock, it can be your iPhone, it can be your, your magic device, whatever you have as your timer, and then you have a piece of paper, you just scribble down reps after every set. I think that's by far the simplest way for me to determine when to add resistance. The next part. As a general rule of thumb, I usually wait until I can do 10 reps of a given weight before inc increasing resistance. <clears throat> that's pretty good. You know, Brian Mann, uh, a couple of years, uh, M-A-N-N, -N, uh, he just moved. He wasn't uh, was Miami. I think he's at Texas A&M now. Uh, he did a nice study years ago. He took the DeLorme product, a protocol. That's the three sets of eight. And then he did a test set on the last set where you, so I do my three sets of eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three times. And then a fourth set where we went for it. Uh, he also used the traditional DeLorme. I'm not going to go into all the details right now, but it's pretty obvious. If you got seven, eight, or nine reps, you stay with that weight the next workout. If you got four, five, six, and now it get, gets kind of hedgy about seven, which way to go, you would go up. Uh, pardon me, you would go down and wait the next time. So if you get five, six, seven, you're probably going too hard. Now, if you get, obviously, if you get 15 reps, the weight's too light. 15, 14, those are obvious. 13's obvious. 12, 11, and 10, and even nine, uh, nine and seven are just, you, you, yeah, that would be a, you know, a real decision to be made. You know, if it's a, a beautiful, perfect lift at nine and then you fail on 10, that's radically different. That's radically different than if you're, you know, your head's moving all the place and the, the bar is twisting around or whatever. If you get, say, 12 reps, then you go up. Um, I like the fact, Julian, that you have a formula and I think that's pretty good. Uh, the downside of using 10, it is, it's a fair number of reps. That I think it's, as I always say, repeatable, doable, and reasonable. Um, an example would be double kettlebell clean and press with 24 kilos as my working set weight until I achieve 10 reps. Then I'd go to 28 and work my way up to 10 over time, then 32. I train for challenge, functionality, longevity, and enjoyment. Is this an optimal approach to overload, or do you have a different approach for steady gains over time? First off, I'm not sure in strength and conditioning, like I always say, pretty good is pretty good. You're looking for optimal, and that's going to be tough. Uh, you're looking, you're looking for, you're kind of looking for perfect, and that's going to be tough. One thing I would say, and I think if you heard my overview here, uh, you would hear that uh, I put a few more parameters than you do. So you say 10 reps. I say 10 reps with good technique. I say, you know, 10 reps, you know, you, you know it's got to be done. Well, it has to be done beautifully. It's got to be perfect technique. Um, if you, you know, if you rest five minutes before that set, and you get the 10 in, that's going to be a lot different than if you rest 30 seconds before you get the 10 in. So make sure you have some of those other uh, parameters locked and loaded. Yeah, it's a that's a very good way to do things, Julian. But I would like you to think about some of the other things I said, too. That's a, that's a fine question. When you get to something as simple as steady gains, uh, which is a phrase I haven't heard. 
I remember back in the 70s, we always said I was making gains. So that was the answer. When you're on a program, I remember being with Mike Cohen one time and talking about a program that Mike Cohen had shared with Eric Subert. And Mike went, yeah, I made good gains in that program. Gains, gains, you know. Um, progressive resistance exercise is what we're chasing here. And of course, progressive resistance exercise is what leads to gains in hypertrophy and strength and all those other wonderful qualities we lift weights for. The best way to do it is to progress, and that is with load, sets, reps, appropriate variations in uh, uh, exercise selection, and, uh, you know, some monitoring of rest periods. And how you get there is, uh, you know, even though I only gave you five options there, uh, in my mind, there's there's literally thousands of combinations you can get there. It's a good question. The most important thing to come away with this, Julian, is if it's working, stay with it. Okay? Thank you.